Hey, real quick before the video starts, just want to say thanks again for the support you guys give me on my channel. We reached 500, like, no problem. The most recent goal was 1,000 subs, and we're getting close to that as well. I know we can smash 1,000 subs. You guys are awesome, and please be sure to share this video if you like it. It really helped me out. Now, back to the video. Hey guys, what's up? I got a lot of info today. Some you've already probably heard um, or seen, but I know I've probably got some that you guys have not seen yet. Now, this week we had some. Uh, some interviews during E3 for the Infinity War development team, and they draw some really cool info. So one thing, uh, a detail, one of the first ones, is that there will be bullet drop in multiplayer, which means there will most likely be some fairly large maps in this game. The game is 10v10, so that makes perfect sense. Also, in the campaign, there won't be any slow-mo moments where you breach into a room in slow motion and pull up you know, sights to take them down. There won't be any of that. It'll be all full speed. You'll also have the ability to mount your gun uh, up against the wall with your hand when peeling around a corner to give you more stability and get you closer to the wall. And if they're really trying to go for realism, this is going to heavily reduce recoil. Uh, also, mantling through windows and other obstacles will be fairly different. For instance, if you're facing a certain direction, uh, when you mantle through the window, you will still be facing in that direction. You will mantle in a way that makes you face whichever way you are facing. So if you want to keep an eye in one direction, for a possible enemy walking through that area, but also climb through the window at the same time, or another obstacle, um, you can do that apparently. They also talked about how much atmosphere they can create with the new technology, in that they don't have to make super big climactic moments for you to feel the intensity of the game. Um, they're focusing more on smaller moments uh, that give you claustrophobia, like walking into a house hearing the creaking of the stairs slowly moving into a room. And in previous games, they always had like doorways open or whatever so bad guys could move in and out of the hallways so you could shoot them. But in this game, they're going to be held up in rooms and you have to breach rooms. You have to open doors slowly or fast or whatever to properly take them down. And it's going to be so precise, you're going to be like clinching the whole time. They also mentioned that as part of realism, they know that uh, SOCOM operators in close quarters environments use light caliber rounds, uh, frangible ammunition, which basically when it goes through a surface, it, it shatters into several pieces. So um, accuracy isn't really going to be a thing shooting through a wall with those rounds, but you still have a really high chance of hitting, you know, random people behind the wall. Now, we also have um, some characters revealed for the campaign. This guy you will be playing, his name is Sergeant Kyle Garrick. He is a uh, law enforcement that works with local counterterrorism in the UK. Basically, he's the type of guy that thinks that we can make the world safer by just putting in more work and going and doing bigger and better things. And so Captain Price pretty much gets him on board and says, all right, well, if you want to do bigger and better things, prove it and join us. So that is indeed a, uh, a playable character. The next playable character for someone who's working with the, uh, the Freedom Fighters is this guy right here. His name is Alex. He is a CIA SAD operator who gets embedded with the Freedom Fighters, the uh, Rebels. He doesn't have a last name, and nobody really knows if Alex is his real name, because he works with the CIA. He's also apparently unfinished, says work in progress, so probably going to be some minor differences when he finally comes out. Now, something interesting and also kind of sad is um, <clears throat> Charlie Intel reported Infinity Ward is still deciding how disturbing they want to make Modern Warfare's campaign, apparently removing some aspects to tone some parts down. I know for me and other fans like me, this was the last thing we wanted to happen. Um, it's still unclear if they're doing this out of uh, uh, pressure put on them by the media or by journalists, or if this really was an internal personal decision by the development team. It's uh, kind of sad, but also kind of makes sense based on what we heard earlier in the week. Joe Limsey uh, was interviewed and he said something about uh, parts of the game still being in pre-alpha. Now, he had tweeted a few months ago, um, how excited he was that the game was going into alpha. And now they're saying pre-alpha, which is really sad. It probably has something to do with the fact that they are going back and making changes to the game. It's really unfortunate because there's only a few months left. It's got to be really stressful. Then making these changes is also probably why we didn't see any campaign footage at this year's E3. And Joe Limsley, if you are watching this, um, I would really love some clarification along with the rest of us. Give the fans some peace of mind, because this type of stuff is starting to worry some of us. If you can't, I understand, but definitely would be pre Now we had a couple multiplayer images revealed. Right here we see a juggernaut, 
uh, mowing something down with a minigun. Um, now that wall, I don't know if that wall is just like that in the map or if it was destroyed because they did talk about destroyable environments. We also don't know if this is going to be some type of kill streak or something. Probably is. Probably is going to be a kill streak. But either way, it looks really cool. And right here, this image is of a Jaeger Corps operator, which is basically Danish Special Forces. Looks really cool. The rifle is using. Um, it's the one we've seen before. It kind of looks like, I'm pretty sure this is uh, a type of intervention. It's got a built-in suppressor. Uh, really cool. We have seen that before, though. But if you look at the map, the map looks really diverse. Um, if you actually pay attention to some of the details, you may have not seen this or recognize this from the background. we got a wall of sandbags right here. Um, in a horseshoe manner, and then it, there's like a, a trail behind it. Now, the trail may kind of end like over here somewhere, or it could go off. We can't see because that rock. But you can see that it kind of goes off this way and then goes back around or maybe just down. Um, so there's a trail there among this open little valley here. And if you go across the valley, you will see that there is actually a shipping container. And this feels really open. It feels really random, which is a good thing. I like when a map feels like a random location, it makes it feel more real instead of a map that feels like it was created and controlled specifically for battle in a video game. Now this last bit is pretty cool, kind of revealing, I think a lot of people overlooked it. So if you go like trying to get some of the t-shirts, these are like designs you can get on the sleeves and you will see like right sleeve and left sleeve in the uh, bottom of the screen there. But each of these emblems represents a unit or a force that you will be working with or be exposed to in the game. Now this first one you see is for your air support. Um, the crest is the same format as like patches for the United States Air Force. But then it has the crown at the top, kind of like Royal Air Force. I don't know if it's joint operations, but it's a cool emblem. They made it. It looks neat. The one below is another rendition of uh, He Who Dares Wins. Uh, the SAS, which is really cool. Um, and then below that is uh, Marines, I believe. It's got the anchor. It's got the devil dog. I believe that's Marines. And below that um, is the trident. I'm pretty sure that's seals, which is pretty dope. And next to that, we have a uh, skull with beret, which is some, it's synonymous with the old classic iconic patch of the uh, uh, MACV Search and Observations Group uh, Special Forces. Now, it may not be American Special Forces, I don't know, but I definitely think that is a Special Forces group. And above it, this emblem with the gargoyle, um, we noticed it before in the trailer. It was on the chest of uh, a couple of the friendlies that were jumping out of the MH-47 in the trailer. So all these emblems so far seem to be connected with the friendlies. Now, the last two, I believe, have to do with uh, the enemy, the bad guys, the Op 4, and the rebels. And the one at the very top with the big star and the skull and the snake and the lightning. I personally think that is like the radical Russian mercenaries. We're fighting some commies. <laughs> I don't know what their stance is. I just know they're bad guys. And I believe the uh, emblem underneath that is uh, for the rebels that you fight with. Sorry, sorry, the freedom fighters. Now, I also believe that these might possibly be used for... Uh, or to represent different levels of prestige. Kind of like in previous Call of Duties, well, specifically like Black Ops 1, they used uh, unit emblems to represent different prestiges. Uh, the, the reason I think that is because if you look at the uh, far left of the screen, you see this right here. This is not a, uh, a patch. This is just like a, a made up rank, pretty much. I think that's gonna be like the first prestige symbol. And the rest of these are gonna be prestige two through nine. And I believe that 10th Prestige will be Master Prestige, and they're not showing Master Prestige on here. That's just my opinion right now. We'll just have to wait and see. Um, but if so, that'd be awesome, because these, these definitely look amazing. Anyways, that's all I got for now. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, drop a like, uh, subscribe, comment down below. Keep the conversation going. Tell me what you're excited about. Tell me what you're bummed out about. Tell me what you're worried about. And uh, I'll catch you guys next time.